preparing for change. It sounds a bit like expect the unexpected. How do you do that? This whole quarter caught me off guard personally with this topic, family seasons. We are used to read books from the Bible or study theological truths by topic in a Sabbath school morning, but this quarter started very practical and this week is even much, much more practical. I would say even unusual for the kind of study that we usually do on, sab on sab Saturday morning. This week we are talking more specifically about the most impactful changes that happen in our life, that we experience in our life. And the question is, how do you prepare for them? It's a huge topic and it's very relevant as the rate things change is increasing constantly. What makes a difference in life is, are we just reacting to changes, to what is happening to us? Or are we more proactive and learn to anticipate and prepare? In life, we are going along in a routine, usually, and then all of a sudden comes a change. Then again a routine for a while, and then again a change. And as much as we know that this is how the world works, this is how the world operates, we are caught most of the times by surprise and without or with very little preparation for a smooth transition. So this week we are asking the question, can we break this vicious circle of surprises by simply making an effort for preparation. It takes most of the time guts to act beforehand of any event happening. The reason is that usually changes brings challenges, temptations, and most of all fears. And all these block and paralyze our strength into a passive and shivering state of denial or procrastination. What can we do to break this reality? What can we do to beat the odds in life as such? The answer is prepare. When we are caught by surprise and we feel insecure, <laughs> we don't know what to do. The lesson points to three things that changes often bring. Temptations, challenges, and fear. It's easy to be taken down by any of this when we don't feel confident and secure in the path that we are on. As this study is in the context of the family, the lesson focuses on four key stages or seasons in our lives. Marriage, parenting, getting old, and ultimately the end of our earthly journey. These are big changes, I mean, how do you prepare? Big, big changes in our life happens when we commit to a partner that we want to spend our whole life with. And the Bible sets the precedence in Genesis, the book of Genesis with Adam and Eve. Their closeness and their one-minded connection was what was their strength, but at the same time was what led them both out of the Garden of Eden. There is one big difference though. For Adam, it was the perfect partner that he could have. She came out of his rib. For us, it's almost an endless choice. And it's good that the Bible gives us some guidance how to prepare ourselves. And one of the best one is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. What kind of love should we be looking for? Love that suffers long and is kind. Love that does not envy. Love that does not parade itself. Love that does not behave rudely. Love that does not seek its own. Thinks no evil does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, and endures all things. Is it easy to prepare for such a complex relationship? Not at all, but it's worth the effort. Preparing for marriage. How can this be covered in a single segment of the weekly lesson? There are so many books, movies, there are apps for that. I strongly believe that the goal of these lessons is not to provide answers so much, but to insist on the importance to be serious about this stuff because they do make a big difference in life. I think that sometimes we can over-prepare in the sense that one may want to get good education, build a career, which all makes sense, but in the same time, the more people get settled, the more difficult it becomes to adapt 
to be a half of someone else. I, for example, decide, believe and decided to get married relatively young because I wanted to build my life with my wife and not to build my life and then invite someone to get into it. But there is no one formula. It's a very personal experience. The lesson brings some good questions and considerations, but the main for me is one's readiness to walk the walk. Because it's a journey, and getting together is just the beginning. I honestly don't think that anyone is really ready for that, especially for the next change in the lesson, becoming a parent. It's amazing how children may turn out okay even with parents like us. My understanding is that if you care, if you are open, and if you do your honest best, you do okay. Spirituality is also key. Understanding one's meaning in life to serve, more than to be served. Finding purpose in working for the well-being of your family. All this will help overcome any challenges. The love and care that Jesus showed us, even though we don't deserve any of it, the way he deals with our infidelities, his pain, his sacrifice, he is doing miracles in us and developing this relationship is the base of everything else. Yeah, to prepare ourselves for what will modulate our children in the persons that they will become, to some extent, is also a huge change. I would say only that, that it takes mental and emotional and physical and spiritual energy for us to make a change, a decision in the right direction of preparedness. If one of those four things is missing or is behind, the other three won't be able to compensate. And we feel this especially in moments of sudden changes. Take for an example a person who is getting into his old age. And there he is. He has prepared his house, his pension, a car that can last lo long years, also an emergency fund for bad days, but did not prepare with what he or she will do while slow walking or body aching, it will be a lonely and empty time of existence. The lesson directs us to Psalm 71, and one of the points to take from there is purposefulness. And a second one is having a mission in our olden days. We cannot go along with what only the world teaches us, especially when it's about achieving happiness as a whole. I want to be able to play soccer even at 80. Maybe no one else would like to play with me, but I really want to be able to do that. It's so easy to get out of touch, but in the same time, it's also so inspiring to when you see someone who hasn't lost passion for life even at older age. But it's very sad when you see older people who have worked hard their entire life now struggle to survive economically, socially, emotionally. But maybe the saddest one is the spiritual struggle. When you have challenges coping with the purpose and meaning of life. The lesson points to three areas of preparation. First, a walk with God through life, developing the relationship and building trust. Second, developing good habits and taking care of our health. And the third, let God's love and care for helping humanity grow in you. Identify with his mission to serve and save people and find purpose in that. Somehow I wanted to avoid this last part of the lesson because it carries a difficult message. It's about death as a season of change. We all know about it, we all have seen it around us. But the Bible is about preparing for this moment in our lives too. Prepare what, you might ask? Prepare ourselves, but prepare also our families and our friends. It makes a difference. Most of the time, the unexpected loss is much, much harder 
to swallow. There is no closure. There is no transition. And it makes it that harder. Any change in life that we meet with preparedness is a lesser shock. We can always do something about it. Even though we know that this world is not our home, we understand the great controversy and enjoy salvation. Even though we believe and have a living hope that the real life is just about to begin and that it will be forever, no one likes that. And it causes real discomfort. Other than putting one's affairs in order, which is the responsible thing to do, it's also very important to be able to find peace. Be it regrets, suffering relationships, unfinished, unfinished business, or anything else. What will help you to find peace? Well, the journey will continue with the next lesson in a week, and it's entitled, When Alone.